Hi everyone, welcome back to part 6 of the Book One Cozy's Club chapter by chapter for Midsummer Night's Mischief, the first book in the Wiccan Wheel Mystery series by Jennifer David Hess. I'm Di and this is my audio only reading vlog for this book. Today I will be reading chapters 21 through 24 and sharing my thoughts with you along the way. Due to the nature of this reading vlog, there will be spoilers. So if you haven't read these chapters yet, I suggest that you not listen to this recording until you have. If you would prefer to hear my general thoughts on this book in its entirety, keep an eye out for my Book One Cozy's Club series first impressions video, which will be posted sometime after the reading vlogs for this book have commenced. So how is everybody doing this evening? We are getting really close to the end, second to the last section. It is quite bursome today. <laughs> it's very chilly right now. So I'm looking forward to getting in some reading time with this book. I had a little bit of a mishap with an order that was delivered today. I'm still waiting to see if they're going to correct um, the mistake they made. I ended up with somebody else's item and not the items that were supposed to deli be delivered to me. So I'm waiting around to see if that will happen. Otherwise, I'm going to have to contact the company again tomorrow and get that all fixed but other than that my day has been okay though <laughs> I thought my computer problems were done with and my personal computer problems are but now my co-worker is having the same issues that I had a couple weeks ago and so she is now having issues and we're waiting on our IT department to get in touch with us when they feel like it because I feel like that's how they handle these things unfortunately but other than that the day has been pretty good I am enjoying the cooler weather it's been nice and overcast as well there was a little bit of a sprinkle which is my favorite and so yeah I am going to dive into chapter 21 right now and I will be back with you in a bit So I just finished chapter 22. I had to laugh when Kelly was decking herself out in her quote unquote costume, bright salmon pink lipstick that was uncharacteristic for her. Um, <laughs> if anything, and you're trying to disguise yourself, I don't think bright colored lipstick is the thing. <laughs> Even if it's uncharacteristic for her, Anybody who didn't know her wouldn't know that that's an uncharacteristic color for her to wear. Plus, it's really bright and I don't know about you, but when I see a bright color, where, whether it be a top or a jacket or, you know, an article of clothing, a purse, a hair accessory, even lipstick, it's eye-catching. I mean, you can't ignore something like that if it gets into your line of vision I don't know maybe that's just me but she also put her hair up in a silk scarf and that's not something usual for me to see at least not you know when I'm out and about maybe it is where she is from or where she is but the way the look was described to me <laughs> I think that she would have stuck out like a sore thumb, at least to me. She would have been better off just wearing her exercise clothes, something, you know, casual. But no, she put her hair up in a scarf and put on salmon pink lipstick that was uncharacteristic for her. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, at least uh, we now have a name for Scarface. That was interesting, the way that she you know, jumped on that opportunity and went in and kind of did a little bit of sleuthing, though it was a kind of dangerous situation she put herself in. Lots of pieces coming together. Um, we now have a phone number for somebody who inquired about the certificate of authenticity. Darlene is now apologizing for her lawyer's actions. And it seems like you know, she kind of thinks her son Rob did it. And 
maybe he did. Unless they can pin down where that phone number was from. The only way to know for sure is going to be to confront him like Kelly is planning to do or has stated at the end of chapter 22. It's kind of unfortunate that Kelly's date with Wes ended so strangely, just like their previous date ended strangely, but I have a feeling they're going to work it out. And like I said in the previous section, I much prefer her with Wes than anybody else we've been introduced to before. I'm not so bothered anymore now that she's not hopping from guy to guy to guy and kind of has settled her attention on Wes, I guess. Not that I have, you know, anything wrong if a person chooses to go from guy to guy to guy, but it kind of felt to me like she was wallowing in her increasing age, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And I think because it came across as a little whiny to me that she was she was whining like, you know, now she's 30 and her life is basically over. And if she doesn't find a guy soon, she's just going to be an old maid. Like, <laughs> I think that coupled with her poor choices on men, i.e. Jeremy and, you know, just kind of noticing every hot guy to cross her path. That's not something that I appreciate in someone's personality. So that coupled with the whining about her increasing age kind of got to me. Now that she's settled on Wes and her birthday's over and there's probably not going to be any more whining about her birthday and her turning 30 and all of that, I think I'm an okay place with where the romance is. However, I'm still feeling like this is like more than half romance to mystery. Not sure exactly what the ratio is on that, but I feel like this book definitely has more of a romance storyline than I've read in a book that is not romance in a long time. I don't mind romances and cozies. In fact, I expect it, but... To me, this one felt a little more heavy in the degree of romance. And I think because I'm feeling like this book is more romance than mystery, that's what bothered me a lot about it. Now that we're getting towards the end and things are, you know, coming into place and there's definitely more pieces coming out, more information, she's doing more investigating, I'm enjoying it a bit more. Now before I jump into chapter 23, I do still have to mention that I don't understand why she didn't contact the police once she saw what was on the note that was in her bag. I mean, the police are already aware that she had this big old rock thrown through her window and now this note she had slipped into her purse has the same message on it it's something that you should be contacting the police about. I mean, even if the person was uber careful and wore gloves the entire time they wrote and or handled the note, there might be some kind of other evidence on it. But she kind of just said, well, it's too late to try to see who dropped the note in my purse anymore. And I didn't agree with that statement. But anyway... I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in the rest of tonight's chapters. I'm going to dive into chapter 23 right now, and I will be back with you in a bit. So I just finished chapter 24. I think the reading of the well could have gone a little bit better. The way she presented it definitely sounded all accusatory and not finessed at all. And I get that she was supposed to have Farah there with her to, you know, help out and 
look out for expressions on people's faces and maybe fidgety maneuvers but I don't understand how Kelly didn't think that Wes was going to be offended by what she said. It doesn't seem like Rob ever looked her in the eye the whole time that they were talking in the office though. So that's a little suspicious. Jeremy coming into the office late for the meeting was also suspicious and avoiding Rob or avoiding looking at Rob was suspicious, especially because we already know that the two of them at least are acquainted with each other. I mean, even if they didn't know each other at all, they sat next to each other at the poker table. So he would have recognized him. Now, was he purposefully avoiding looking at him? So that people wouldn't know that they knew each other? I'm not sure. It's kind of hard to decipher how Jeremy and Rob were acting without actually seeing it, I guess. Even I got a little bit uncomfortable reading that section just from the way that the lines were delivered. That couldn't have been a comfortable situ situation for anybody to have to hear or experience. Because it did come across to me very accusatory. So I'm curious to see what uh, Kelly thinks she might find when she goes to Eleanor's. Again, Crenshaw. Still don't like him very much. Kind of irritated that Beverly thought that he should be there because he's nothing but condescending towards Kelly. He... He does things that's not that he's not supposed to do. And yeah, he's been taking over Kelly's clients, but at the same time, he's also been slandering her. I mean, he flat out told at least one client. I can't believe that he wouldn't have told more of them the same thing. But he told at least one client that she was, you know, never coming back or, you know, on probation and she had done something bad and... I'm still waiting for his comeuppance at the end of this book. And, you know, he probably dialed Beverly directly to tattletale on Kelly. Something else happened in these chapters that I don't understand. Why did she hide from Wes in the library? I don't understand. Like, I don't think she was someplace she wasn't supposed to be. I mean, wasn't it a library? Did I not read that right? I mean, anybody could go to the library, so why, why act like you're a robber? <laughs> I don't know. That was, I feel like they both kind of don't know how to act around each other. But now that Kelly's kind of, you know, accused him of possibly being the person who stole the first folio, I can understand why he's a bit miffed with her at the moment. So there's only one section left. We have three chapters left in this book. Things are starting to wrap up and I am really looking forward to seeing who actually stole the first folio if her hunch was correct, that it was somebody in the room when she was doing the reading of the will. I'm looking forward to maybe seeing Crenshaw get a kick in the batuti <laughs> because no matter his intentions, which I don't think were very nice to begin with, he didn't act appropriately for what was going on at the law firm. At least I don't think so. Plus, he's kind of always been icy. I don't know if that's the word you'd use. But when we first met him at that bakery at the beginning, he wasn't very nice to Kelly then. So... Yeah, I'm kind of hoping he gets a little kick in the butt before this book is over. I'm looking forward to seeing who actually stole the first folio, what the intention was, or, well, the intention is going to be to sell the book, but what their motive was. Was it Jeremy or Rob? Um, their motive is probably the most obvious one, needing funds um, due to gambling debts. 
And I'm also looking forward to seeing if Kelly and Wes can patch things up between them before the book ends. So that will do it for me today. Let me know your thoughts on these chapters down in the comments below. Don't forget, you can also chat with me on our Discord or in the Mystery Madness Goodreads group. Any one of those places is good to chat with me about this book or these chapters. If you have any theories on how this book is going to end, definitely let me know. And that will do it for me this evening. So I will be back with you tomorrow for our final section, chapters 25 through 27. And I will talk to you later. Have a good evening. Bye.